This presentation is called, What is W? From Hamilton's Rule to Axelrod's Rule, Part 2. So in this presentation, we're going to try to answer just two questions. One, what difference does W make in the iterated prisoner's dilemma? Remember, that's when the prisoner's dilemma is repeated. And secondly, how does W discount the future? So Axelrod's rule, again, is that altruism can evolve when W times B is greater than C. And what we want to understand is what W refers to. We know that B is the benefit to the recipient of the act and C is the cost to the donor. What is W? And as you recall, there's more than one prisoner's dilemma game. So there's the one shot game, which we talked about at the very start of this section. But then there's the repeated game. And it's a repeated game that we're most interested in. And that's because the one shot game has the dice loaded against cooperation as Ken Binmore puts it. Whereas in the repeated game, to quote Robert Axelrod, the very fact that the players might meet again makes it possible for cooperation to emerge. And this is what we're interested in. So the question is, how does W operate in the iterated prisoner's dilemma? Now to think about the iterated prisoner's dilemma, where the game repeats, we have to imagine a lot of players. And we said last time that this might include red and blue who interact, as well as green and orange. And actually in Axelrod's first tournament, there were 14 different strategies playing against one another. And in his second tournament, there were 63 different strategies. But each time one of these players meets one another, they engage in a round of the prisoner's dilemma. And the issue really is, why don't they treat all of those meetings as a one-shot game? So we have to imagine this as a tournament and in this tournament, when we talk about players, we're really talking about strategies. And to keep things very simple, we've only discussed three different strategies. One of these is called All C, and that means always cooperate. And another is called All D, and that means always defect. So these are examples of unconditional strategies that make the same play regardless of what other players do. They only have one behavior that's evolved, as it were. So what is W? Well, W is just the probability that any of these strategies will meet up with one another again. And our question is, well, what difference does that make? Or what difference does it make to our understanding of the repeated prisoner's dilemma when we take W into account? So the function of W is to discount the future. And what does that mean? Well, it turns on the idea that when we're interacting with one another, the future is less important than the present. And Axelrod makes two arguments in relation to this, and one is that we value what we get now over what we might get in the future. So we're more concerned with our current rewards than later rewards. And secondly, there's always a chance that we will never meet again. And if that's the case, uh, we should play the prisoner's dilemma, in any case, as a one-shot game. So how do we take this into account that the future is less significant than what's going on right now? And this is exactly what W is intended to do 
in the model. So consider this scenario. We have all D, and all D runs into another all D. And we know that when two players defect on one another in the prisoner's dilemma, they earn one point apiece or two points total. And you might say, how do we know that? Well, we've looked at the prisoner's dilemma. So to review this, here's the matrix. And the payoff when two players defect on one another is one point each. And that's the spiteful corner of the prisoner's dilemma matrix. So this is where we're getting the one plus one is simply from the payoff matrix that we've been using in all of these presentations. However, when they meet a second time, W refers to the discount on the payoff at their second meeting. So if W is 50%, then what we do is we take the payoff from the first meeting and we multiply it times 0.5, and this reduces the payoff on their second meeting to 0.5. So the second time they meet, each defector will only earn half a point or one point combined total. And if we put this again back into the matrix, what we're saying is that at the second meeting of two actors, we discount the rewards that they gained or the payoff that they gain. And now the defectors, instead of getting one point each, get only a half a point each. And what happens when they meet a third time? Well, when they're thinking about their third meeting, it's even more discounted. So now we take the 0.5 of the second meeting and we multiply that by 0.5 again. And now we get 0.25. And 0.25 plus 0.25 is only 0.5. And this is their earnings at their third meeting. So again, if we imagine this in terms of the payoff matrix, each time that the same two actors are interacting yet again and defecting on one another, they're earning half as much as they did at their prior meeting. And similarly, the same thing will hold at their fourth meeting. Now we'll take 0.25 times 0.5, and this will give us 0.125. And if you're thinking about this, this is the same as the relatedness to a first cousin in Hamilton's rule. And 0.125 plus 0.125 is 0.25. That's their joint earnings. So let's think about this. We're saying that each additional meeting is worth half the points of the previous meeting. And this is discounting the future. And if we define W as being 50%, it's convenient to do that when we're comparing this model to Hamilton's rule. Because, of course, relatedness is discounted at 50% with each additional step away from the person or the actor that we're interested in. So let's make the comparison explicit between Axelrod's rule and Hamilton's rule. In Hamilton's rule, we started with a clone, which is yourself, and said your relatedness to yourself is 100%. Your relatedness to your child is 50%, to your grandchild 25%, and to your great-grandchild 12.5%. And of course, a nephew was also 25% and a first cousin 12.5%. A sibling was similarly 50%. Well, to keep things easily comparable, we're using W equals 50%. And what this means is that the first meeting we're at 100%, at the second meeting, 50%, at the third meeting, the discount is down to 25%, and at the fourth meeting, 12.5%. And I'm trying to keep you on familiar turf here as we work on this new model. So get ready, hold on, because this is some really cool math coming up. So our question is, how many points 
Will an actor who always defects earn if it meets another actor that always defects an infinite amount of times over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? They just keep bumping into each other, and each time they meet, their earnings are discounted 50%. And you might say, well, if they can meet an infinity of times, what they can earn will also be infinity, but that's not true. So what we have to do to calculate this, actually, is we take the one point that they earned at their first interaction before the discount kicked in, and then we start adding to it these discounted earnings of one-half and one-quarter and one eighth and one thirty second and if we keep doing that in fact we don't get to some infinite number we can just keep having and having and having and having to one sixty fourth and one one hundred and twenty eighth and one two fifty sixth and one five twelfth but if we do that this is called an infinite series and in fact all of those additional encounters are only going to add up to one additional point. So when we use 50% as our discount and we start adding the fractions together, I've got some stuff on the review guide on this, but rather than getting a very large number, in fact, all of those fractions add up only to one. And they don't quite get there, but they get close enough to one that we can call it one. So this is really cool math because it's counterintuitive. And it says that when we add one half and one quarter and one eighth and one sixteenth and one thirty second, and we just keep having like that forever, we're only going to get to one. And one is going to be the sum of that infinite series. And so that's all the extra points that all D will get in all of their interactions. So with W discounting each meeting and the players meeting endlessly, each all D will earn a total of two points. Once on their first encounter, one point, and a second point on all of the other encounters that occur. And so their collective offspring will be four after many, 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 many generations. Now consider a scenario involving always cooperate. So we have two cooperators, and they meet one another. And at their first meeting, they earn two offspring each, or four total. And how do we know that? Well, those are the payoffs that we defined for the cooperative corner of the prisoner's dilemma matrix. And get ready again, because this is the same really cool math. So how many points will an all C earn if it meets another all C over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again? And you might say, well, that's got to be some very large number of points. But it's not true. So what we do is we take the two points that the all C earns at the first encounter, and then we have to cut that in half to one point, and that gives us three. But then we're right back to the same infinite series that we were working on with always defect. We can add one half to one quarter and add one eighth to that and a sixteenth and a thirty second and a sixty fourth and a one twenty eighth. And if we keep doing that, all of those fractions only add up to one more point. So all C earns two points on the first encounter and two additional points from an infinite number of later encounters. And again, this is because they have one full point from the second encounter. The third is a half point. The fourth is a quarter point. And when we take and we add a half and a quarter and an eighth, and a 16th and a 32nd and a 64th and a 1128th and a 1256th and a 1512th and a 1124th. All of those are only going to approach one. 
and they all add up to one additional point and one plus one equals two. So W is the discount on each additional meeting and if the players meet endlessly all C and in can earn four points each and their combined offspring count will then be eight after many, 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 many generations. So if we tally up the discounted outcomes and we compare the reproductive success of two all C players interacting, which is eight, to two all D players interacting, which when the discount is 50%, amounts to 4. Clearly, when W is 50%, all C, if all C only plays against all C, has the highest reproductive success, but this is the largest numbers that can result. 8 for the two all C players and 4 for the two all D players. Now there's another way yet to think about W, and we're going to discuss that in the third part of this presentation. Thank you for listening.